you're a black man, I'm a black man. Mm -hmm. We didn't come up in communities where it was encouraged to go sit. Hell nah. <laughs> You kidding me, man? Some of my homies still don't understand what I do. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, can, can you speak to the important, because being open and being honest about saying, I need to go sit and talk to somebody. You know, it's a new day out here, but the stigma, it still hasn't quite gone away. So can you speak to our audience, especially if you're from a community that frowns on the fact that you might need to go and talk to somebody, how can just being open and honest help you? Man, you know, there's this thing we do as humans where we, our minds go out of their, uh, your mind will go out of its way to protect you sometimes. And it's not always in your long-term best interest. And we have this thing with discomfort and uncomfortable thoughts and thoughts that make us feel less than where we'll go around it. Like we'll give ourselves affirmations. Let's say me, black man, for instance, I'll be like, yeah, I'm a king. I'm a king. I'm royalty. And we'll give ourselves these big up affirmations that don't have the substance behind them because we're too afraid to confront the real issues. I can't be a king if I feel so self-conscious and so afraid to address it that I poison everything around me. But I can call myself a king and completely ignore that. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? So and the same thing goes for queen. The same thing goes for all of us. It's not just a black man issue, which is really popular to say when it comes to mental health. It's all of us. And the thing is, it's, it's not even to make anybody feel guilty. Our brains are hardwired to not really address uncomfortable thoughts and feelings. We go around them because it hurts. Who wants to deal with that? Who wants to feel less than? Who wants to be neck deep in the issue that they feel like they can't get themselves out of? And with Black men specifically, it's a thing of um, asking for help. How we're pillars of our households in terms of strength and in terms of uh, financial reliability. And, and us, if we feel like we don't have money, we don't feel like we're anything. And neither does the world. So that kind of hardwires you and orients you in a certain way that makes it a little bit more difficult to find the words and ask for help. They always say like, oh, black men don't go to therapy. That ain't true. Black men need therapy. Black men are some of my best clients, man. The access to the feelings are there. Just sometimes the words... They, they just need to be, they need help stringing from point A to point B because the upbringing of black boys isn't that of emotional expression. So you become a man that struggles to find the words that depict the ways that you feel. How, how important do you think within our community, and I'm talking black men and black, how important is it for us to seek out and speak to people such as yourself? Uh, forego all of these preconceived ideas that if I go and sit and talk to somebody, that means something about me. I'm crazy. I'm going to be looked down on. I'm less than. How important do you think me showing, just speaking to care really is for my own wellness? Tremendously important, bro. Tremendously important. You know, one... <laughs> I'm a married man, so I, I love to complain about being married. That's like a hobby. That's what we do. But one thing my wife serves as is a, is a reflection of myself. I get to see the things I do and how, how they look outside of my mind's understanding through her responses to me. And I think that to have another mirror in front of you that can take what you're saying, understand who you are on, on some human level, who you are on some social level, who you are on some emotional level, and then spit it back at you to kind of give you some clarity. I, I think that's uh, that's invaluable, man. But um, the I think it's the formal process of therapy that kind of scares people. Mm -hmm. and what it looks like and the in, people aren't introduced to therapy in a way that feels safe sometimes um so it's it's not just people having an overall reluctance to it it's it's 
it hasn't been painted in the best light traditionally and it's been pretty eurocentric it don't it don't feel like us yeah. you know so it's it's really important to go out and talk to somebody but i always use my brain doesn't always process things as fast or as well as i would like it's just the way my mind works so i have to create analogies to make shit make sense to me and one thing i do is a car a car and the maintenance on a car is very simple, very similar to therapy and taking care of your mental health. You don't want to go and just get maintenance on your car when some shit is wrong. You want to go and get preventative maintenance to make sure all the fluids are running, to make sure the power steering going to be Gucci when you go on that long trip. Like it's preventative. And I think we look at mental health or we look at uh, wellness from a practitioner standpoint, like going to see somebody, we look at it as I'm going to fix an issue. And I think it would be great if we reframed our minds to say, hey, I want to make sure everything Gucci and everything stays Gucci. So this is why I'm going to go to my therapist. Your therapist should be in your rotation with your with your barber, your weed man, <laughs> your, uh, <laughs> all that. It should be in the same rotation because that is a team that contributes to your overall well-being. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.